Hi, good morning. It is 9.30, it is Thursday, and it is time for the plant of the week. I am Sarah Smith, a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and uh, the plant of the week through this whole entire summer is hummingbird summer plants. Uh, so it's all plants that the hummingbirds absolutely love, uh, which is fantastic because that also means typically the bees love them and the butterflies love them. So uh, they tend to all be really beautiful pollinator plants. Uh, we're real lucky because hummingbirds like pretty plants. <laughs> So just like us, they like things pretty. Um, the plant of the week this week is Agastache. Uh, so that's the plants that I have here in front of me. Very similar looking to Salvia. Uh, the beautiful thing about Agastache is it doesn't need hardly anything. Uh, in fact, it kind of thrives on neglect. It's one of those kind of plants. Uh, so needs very little water, doesn't like a like really super rich, fertile, moist soil. It's not looking for that. It's looking for uh, arid uh, kind of just plain soil that is not... Uh, super fertilized, uh, doesn't need a lot of water. So uh, very, very water smart, which is great. So if you have that kind of corner of your yard that just is like a neglected corner of your yard and you wanna put something easy in there and not spend a ton of money on amending the soil and uh, all that stuff, this is a very good plant for that. Uh, actually related to uh, cat mint. So it has a really kind of neat smell. So they call it hummingbird mint. Uh, Agastache, sometimes you'll call it, people will call it hyssop. Uh, so it has a lot of different names, but it smells a lot like cat mint. It has a very kind of neat, almost um, minty kind of medicinal smell, but beautiful. It's something I absolutely love. And here comes a little hummingbird. Maybe she'll come for us. Oh no, she's gonna go for the kupias down below. Uh, that's a, a little Allen hummingbird. Uh, yeah, so uh, the hummingbirds are out in full force right now. Uh, it's really kind of amazing. So we have all the hummingbird plants all kind of gathered together. We have over 40 different hummingbird feeders around the store. Uh, so the hummingbird activity is just absolutely crazy at the store right now, uh, especially in the morning. It's really a great time to come in uh, if you want to um, have you know, your friends come and uh, check it out. If you've got your kids out of school and you wanna walk around and enjoy all the wildlife, uh, this is a really great time for that. And I just have tons of it going on right now. There's a big, huge bumblebee, uh, all the hummingbirds, uh, all the butterflies right now. It's really, really fun. So uh, Agastache, yeah, so super easy plant. Doesn't hardly need anything. Really would prefer uh, full sun. Um, if you have, uh, if you wanna get one of these plants in your garden, but say your soil is absolutely Absolutely beautiful and super super rich perfect to put in a pot uh, you can use uh, even just regular cactus mix would be totally fine for this uh, and doesn't need like a particularly big big pot what's really nice when we have these cachet pots like this they could stay in this pot for quite some time uh, so this is one that you can just pick up and kind of uh, put right in the ground or right in the yard just like this you don't have to necessarily plant it um, if you have succulents and you wanna add some color, this is a really good plant for that. So mixes really well with that. Needs very similar uh, requirements to what succulents and cacti need. So it's a really good uh, way to kind of add a little bit of pretty wild looking color uh, into uh, with your succulents. So I have mine planted with all of my succulents uh, and some other really pretty kind of popping colors. These do come in some purples and some blues. The purple and blue varieties uh, need a little bit more protection and do want a little bit more water uh, and a little bit more nutrients. Uh, it's not one that I have right now, so I don't have it out here, but uh, they don't really require a whole lot either. Um, with this one too, it is a perennial, so it's something that will last year round. Uh, the best time to really trim this back is in the early springtime. Uh, just kind of like you do with all of your salvias and stuff. You'll start to notice uh, that the old growth is kind of uh, petering out and sort of looking done. Um, you can definitely deadhead this through the year. So if you have a spike that looks done and spent, which none of these actually do right now, these are actually all very beautiful plants. But let's say you have a spike that looks kind of done you just take that spike, you go down to a set of leaflets cut right above that so you don't have a really sharp um, kind of dull looking stem, uh, cut down to that and then the new growth will come up. And you always want to keep things deadheaded because one, it just makes things look tidier. So that just means when the flowers are spent, you cut them off. Um, and two, that actually forces the plant to flower more. So you want to get as many flowers as you can out of it. So the more you keep them from going to seed, the more flowers they keep putting out because a plant thinks, oh, I've gone to seed, so my job is done. I don't need to make any more flowers. So you want to keep cutting it back so then that way it keeps producing more flowers. It also makes it bushier and fuller looking too, which is 
you know, kind of a win-win situation, but uh, keeping it cut back um, just by deadheading is a really great idea. And then doing your big kind of shaping in the early springtime. So you'll notice that you'll have um, the old kind of growth from last year. You'll see new growth down below at the bottom uh, for this next year. So you cut down to that new growth. Um, and that way, that's the only time you have to do like a really big prune on it. And that way you get rid of all the old stuff from last year and you have all the new spring growth. But right now you just put it in the ground. It's summertime, so you don't have to do anything to it really till next spring. A little bit of water to kind of get it established in the beginning. When you're watering, the key is low and slow always for all plants. Um, and you want to make sure that you're penetrating the root ball that it was originally in. So the root ball that was in the container um, really, really well. And that you're just watering uh, down below past that. So those new, those roots that are in that root ball are going down into the surrounding soil and really kind of searching and looking for um, more water. The deeper you get your roots of all of your plants for every plant, the healthier your plant will be, the stronger, more sturdy your plant will be, um, and the more water wise your plant will be. So it's not going to require as much and it'll get it nice and established. Once you get this established, you're kind of done. It's a really easy plant, doesn't need a lot of water. So definitely put it in a space um, where you're not gonna be over watering it um, and then put it in a spot where it's gonna get really good full sun and put it in a spot where it's not like super good, rich soil because it doesn't actually want that. It wants to be kind of neglected. Uh, so a great thing, like I said, to mix in with your cactuses and stuff uh, and all your succulents. Uh, but such beautiful flowers. I love this orange one. This is the orange one that I have at home. It's so, so pretty. We have it planted here in our hummingbird uh, our butterfly and bird garden uh, and you see all the hummingbirds just going to it constantly all the time uh, so it's really fun to watch all the activity on it and the bees love it too so uh, it's a really really great plant to incorporate into your garden to attract all that good uh, wildlife and all the hummingbirds and stuff and I'm so enjoying watching the hummingbirds it's so funny I watch them fly around and their beaks are just completely covered in pollen. It's so funny because they're feeding on all the plants. So they always have little pollen -y kind of between their eyes and down the tips of their beaks from going in and out of all the flowers. So it's a, it's a really fun time to come into the garden and see all of that activity going on right now. Um, of course, we are live. So if you guys have any questions, you can always ask any of your questions down below. If you came into this a little late, uh, you can throw your questions down in below as well and we will answer those questions for you. And we can answer anything for you about hummingbirds. So hummingbird feeders, we have tons of different beautiful feeders. We have really great nectar. We have tons of videos online about how to take care of your hummingbird feeder. So if you want to get a hummingbird feeder in your garden this summer, uh, definitely watch a video on that. There is uh, some things that you really have to do special for the hummingbirds. You want to make sure that if we are going to feed them, that we're feeding them correctly. You're keeping that feeder really clean. You're using the right kind of nectar. Nothing with dye in it. Nothing with weird coconut sugar. Uh, any kind of weird corn syrup you just want to use straight sugar we have really really great um, hummingbird nectar here oh this it's the same little one that keeps coming up and I want you to come up to here so you can be on screen um, but we have a really great nectar that's really kind of a full range sort of nectar so it's not just giving them one type of sugar it's um, a really balanced one uh, it's the Rogers Gardens exclusive brand that we sell here which is really fantastic for the hummingbirds um, and we have all kinds of great books and all kinds of really fun things. So if you've got that hummingbird uh, person in your life who loves all the hummingbirds, make sure you tag them down below so they know what we have going on here as well. So uh, all kinds of fun things. Uh, make sure that you sign up for our... Um, our email list too so you know all the new things that are coming up we always have all kinds of great specials buy two get one free with our petunias right now um, all the really great things we have going on for hummingbird summer uh, the upcoming summer sales that we have going on here as well um, we've got all kinds of great information that we put there we put all the information in from all of our different videos and stuff our YouTube page is filled with all kinds of information. So if you've got any kind of question or something that you're curious about, how do I cut back my rows? How do I take care of this? How do I take care of that? I guarantee we have a video uh, there for it. So if we don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and sign off right now. Um, and you can put your questions in down below uh, so we can answer them for you later. But make sure you come and check this out. Smell these. Look at how beautiful they are. If you've got that area where you're like, I need some color and it's just a hard area and I don't want to put a lot of money into mending and doing all this extra special stuff this is the plant for you it's so fantastic and if you've got really great soil and you're like oh no <laughs> i worked really hard on getting good soil now this plant doesn't need it 
put it in a pot. We even have these ones in these nice cachet pots just like that. So they're all ready to go. You just grab it and you throw it underneath your hummingbird feeder. You wanna make sure you have uh, real plants for your hummingbirds, not just hummingbird feeders. So this is a great one to stick down below. That'll attract them into your yard too, especially if you're putting a new hummingbird feeder and you don't have any hummingbirds in your garden yet. Make sure you put some flowers, something flashy and pretty that they really like. And these are definitely that. Uh, and you'll definitely attract all of those hummingbirds into your garden. So thank you so much for tuning in. Stay well, be safe, and happy gardening. Bye.